Hello, uh, hi students. This is Kriti Mishra, lecturer, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT College of Polytechnic. Today we are here for the discussion of an electrical engineering core topic, which is installation, maintenance, and repair of electrical equipment. In this, we are going to discuss about tools and accessories required for installation, maintenance, and repair of electrical equipment. So, now we are going to discuss about the tools and accessories required for installation, maintenance and repair of electrical equipment. So, and uh, there is an introduction about why we are, uh, why there is need of tools and accessories for the installation, maintenance and repair of electrical equipment as we are we know that uh, when we have some process for installation of some new machines new uh, building construction work we need some proper tools for our safety and for making work easier so here tools are required to carry out the installation and maintenance work without proper tool it is difficult to carry repair and maintenance work so if uh, like we have to uh, put, uh, we have to do a hole in a wall, we required some, uh, some kind of sharp thing that, uh, that will drill on the wall, right? But when we, uh, when there is drilling machine, we can easily do that now. So uh, we don't require any uh, tool for, uh, we require some perfect tool which uh, makes a low effort, uh, which makes uh, which we uh, we can use and make it with, uh, with low efforts. So here are the various tools which we can use for these maintenance and uh, insulation work. So the uh, first one is com combination plier. Uh, these are of two types: side cutting plier and long nose and uh, long nose plier. These are used for generally uh, to sharpen and to. Uh, uh, Sharp the wires, wire ends, and then a screwdriver, hammer, cutter, shaws, and wood saw. These are these we can use and see in day to day lives. So we don't need here to discuss uh, long about this. So the next slide is hacksaw, knife, chisel, hand drill, file, poker, gimlet, auger bit, plumb bob, pen spice, center punch, spanner, standard ga wire gauge. These are the some instruments which are used for day to day. Uh, we can uh, you have used the, uh, you had used these tools in uh, workshop also, and you have used uh, you have seen these in workshops and in carpenter shops. Uh, so uh, you see here the diagrams of tri square claw hammer, screwdriver, screwdriver. Different types of screwdrivers are there: hex hexical screwdriver, helical screwdrivers, and uh, Electrical screwdrivers, which don't have, uh, which only battery driven, uh, which are only battery driven. So you can be, uh, see these. So now we are going to discuss about the testing and measuring instruments which are required for electrical equipment installation. First one is earth tester. And uh, earth tester is mainly used to measure the earth resistance. Uh, we are using the earth resistance for measuring the resistance of the ground uh, ground or the earth resistor when uh, building is protected from the uh, from the earth earthing or earthing provided by the uh, earthing is provided to the building so we need to uh, measure the earth resistance what will be the what should be the earth resistance here so earth resistance is a special type of ohm meter which sends ac signal through the earth and dc through the measuring instruments the value of earth resistance is indicated directly on the scale when the handle is turned on. Uh, here we have a diagram. Uh, one, two, right. yeah. This is basic uh, layout diagram of an earth resistor. Here we have three electrodes. Earth electrode, auxiliary, potential electrode, auxiliary, current electrode. These electrodes were when inserted inside the uh, dig, uh, when we dig the earth and put these electrode inside that. And we uh, should rotate this hand driven DC generator. So you can see 
the value of the earth resistance is indicated indicated directly on the scale when the handle is turned at uniform speed so the distance between the earth electrode here we can see the picture in the picture these earth electrode and auxiliary potential electrode is kept earth electrode and the current electrode should be kept between 25 meters and the potential electrode and earth electrode it should be 12.5 meters when put the, uh, when we maintain the distance and then we we uh, drive the hand driven generator so we can measure the value of we can measure the value of earth resistance when we are measuring the uh, earth resistance of large power stations that should be 0.5 ohm and when we measure the uh, earth resistance of major substation it should be 1 ohm and for small substation it should be 2 ohm then we will uh, connect the, uh, when we will take the earth and measure the uh, earth resistance we will find out these three re resistance and the uh, earth meters so we can easily found find out the earth resistance by using earth tester so next uh, the ins what instruments we are going to discuss is mega so mega is generally used for high resistance when we have to measure the insulation resistance we will use mega as mega is used for high resistance uh, so uh, where we can find the uh, high resistance like transformer resistance of transformer generators motor coils we generally see uh, the insulation resistance with, uh, when we have to put the uh, insulation resistance above the coils we can see uh, a lot of higher resistance higher insulation resistance are there higher insulating materials we we have impregnated paper and all the others insulating materials we are using so we have to identify what is the uh, you, uh, what is the value of these uh, resistances so we are using mega for that it is available in different voltages that is 500 volt 1000 volt 2500 volt and 5000 volt a high value of resistance indicates good insulation that all that we all know that uh, higher resistance provide very good insulation as lower resistance is a very good uh, conductor so here we have a diagram of an mega which we uh, which is used for a measurement measurement of high resistance this one is current coil magnet and uh, these are all the instruments which uh, which is working on the principle of electromagnetic induction so i don't need we have to explain this but okay it is fine uh, when uh, we are little uh, we are going to explain it briefly when there is no connection when we haven't connected any of the wire or insulating materials and uh, when the circuit is open then we see the infinity the pointer is at infinity as the nothing is connected the circuit is open so we have inf uh, infinite resistance mega is initially at rest and it is pointing uh, uh, pointing infinite in, uh, infinite resistance when we connect some wire a proper wire and the another terminal with an insulating material then we see slight fluctuation uh, that is in some mega ohm uh, which uh, which indicates the value of that insulating material so this is uh, the principle beyond this is basically electromagnetic induction so yes this is mega what we have to discuss then phase sequence indicator phase sequence indicator is generally a uh, consist of rotating disk with an arrowed mark on it and three terminals r y b the phase sequence is generally uh, defining which phase our motor or generator is rotating in r y b or r b by which phases they are rotating in in phase with this uh, in, then we have to change the phase sequence we generally turn two uh, two phases when uh, when then we have to convert the phase, phase sequence we generally interchange the two terminals of the uh, supply then we have to discuss about the transformer oil test kit 
which is used for measurement of dielectric strength or breakdown value of transformer oil. And the another thing is multimeter. It is also known as um, very commonly used in laboratories. It is also known as AVO, that is a meter voltmeter and ohmmeter. It is it is used to measure AC and DC current and resistances. These were the tools which are used to tackle the installation and maintenance work easily, faithfully. Jacks, cranes. These were the tools which we can see in our day day to day life. Chain pulley, jack, crane, hammer drill machine, ladder, rubber gloves, helmets, protective clothes, crimping tools, etc. And students, uh, you must know when we have to enter in an industry, these were the things like protective clothes, helmets, rubber gloves. These were the necessary one for entering in in the in, in the uh, electrical industry. So for so why we are using all these tools and accessories or a proper dress up required for we require all these for proper we required all these for the protection of ourselves from electrical shock accidents electrical accidents why we are why these are happening these were the some reasons what we are going to discuss it is a sudden stimulation of nervous system of human body by flow of electrical current through part of body treatment for electrical shock switch off the supply when when we uh, when we get the electric shock what were the treatment what were the quick treatments we are going to uh, observe is switch off the supply remove the person from the direct contact of live wire with wood stick, remove from the wire, treatment of burn, artificial respiration. We are going to uh, discuss about artificial respiration in, further, uh, in other slides also. So these were the treatments of the electric shock, which can save our life. Accidents, what is accidents? And it is an unexpected and unplanned event, which may or may not cause injury. Electrical accidents, in every case where a person receives an electrical shock and suffer an injury directly or indirectly in communication with generation and transmission distribution and use for electrical energy should be electrical accidents. Causes of uh, What were the causes of electrical accidents? Working on line wires. We ha haven't switched off the uh, isolators and... Uh, Circuit because and with uh, we are directly going in on line wires for the fault corrections. These were the cause of electrical accidents. Unsafe working. We haven't. Uh, we don't use gloves and proper helmets in industry and uh, which causes electrical accidents. Lack of supervision. Lack of knowledge of electrical equipment. Not use proper insulation tools. These were the causes of electrical accidents. Artificial respiration, as I told earlier, we have to discuss this artificial respiration, the fifth point of electrical shock is causes of uh, electrical shock and what are the treatment for electrical shock is the fifth point is artificial respiration. So here we are going to discuss about the artificial respiration. To restore the normal breathing and prevent death, until the medical aid reaches. There were the three methods, Skeppers prone method, Sylvester method, mouth to mouth method. These were the three uh, common methods uh, which we are using when we are having some person behind us or with us uh, suffering from electrical shock. So we can give these three artificial respiration method. First one is Skeppers prone method. The Skeppers prone method is directly given in these pictures where one person is ab is on the um, other person and giving ribs uh, pushing uh, pushing his ribs for breathing properly and when it doesn't breathe out properly after two to three seconds or five seconds we have to give it back for 
after five to three minutes. Then we are doing it other time until it gets on to the normal breathing process. Likewise, Sylvester method is used uh, when uh, the person uh, is don't ha is in, uh, having no oxygen coming. Uh, when we are observing that uh, the person lying there and having no oxygen support and nothing there in front of us, then we put his arm upwards, side uh, side above the head, and then we are and then we are uh, giving it through the arms. Pushing his arms outward and inwards direction, and giving breathe properly until uh, until the response from him doesn't appear. And the third one is mouth to mouth, as we all know. Electrical safety rules. Indian electricity rules, nineteen fifty six. Indian Electricity Rules, 1956. Uh, knowledge of this is important for all electrical engineers and supervisors, etc. Uh, these were the rules which are uh, initiate which are initiative of uh, initiative of Indian government for the electrical engineers and supervisors in the working environment in working buildings. What are they? They are do not use wire with poor insulation. Do not touch it's, that's any ele electrical equipment with wet hands or bleeding from cut and abrasion. Do not work on online circuits without taking extra precaution, such as use of rubber gloves, insulated tools like plier, screwdriver, etc. Do not use fire extinguisher on electrical equipment. Use sand or blanket instead. Do not throw water on electrical equipment in case of fire. Do not allow to touch the electrical appliances or motor to any unauthorized person or visitors. Do not allow to any people in danger zone of high voltage line. Do not test the electric circuit with bare finger. These were the electrical safety rules provided by Indian government for electrical engineers and supervisors, which we all have to know. Rule number nine. These were the instructions and these were the rules which are followed by that instructions. Rule number 29, construction, installation, protection, operation, and maintenance of electrical supply and apparatus. Rule number twenty nine itself said about the what were the feature, uh, what were the um, construction sites, and what are the protection we are needed for installation, operation, and maintenance of electrical supply and apparatus. Rule number thirty discussed about the service service lines and apparatus on consumer premises. Rule number thirty five tells about the danger notice on high voltage line and. The substation line. Rule number forty-two tells about the accidental charges when some uh, industry or some company have uh, is having some uh, some accidents to their workers. Then what should they charge? Rule number forty-five tells about the precautions to be. Sorry, rule number 44, instructions for restoration of persons suffering from electrical shocks. Rule number 45, precautions to be adopted by consumers, owner, occupiers, electrical contractors, electrical workmen, and suppliers. Rule number 47, testing of consumer installations. Rule number 50, supply and use of energy. These were the rules which are followed by in. Uh, Every company and every electrical substations and every electrical industry for the well being of the society and for the well being of their employees. Rule number 51 provision applicable to medium and or extra high voltage installation. Rule number 56 sealing of meters and cutouts. 
Rule number 60 tells about the test for resistance and insulation. Rule number 77 tells about clearance above ground to of the lowest conductor. When we have two towers and uh, some transmission line is going through the towers, then uh, we need to know about the what, what should be the ground clearance and uh, as the person or the vehicle passing through that line should not be touched or should not be affected by that line. So there is rule number 77, which tells about the clearance about ground of the lowest conductor. So these were the some rules of IEC and these, uh, so here we, today we have discussed about the tools and accessories and some rules and some instruments which are used for installation, maintenance and repair of electrical equipment. So a very, very thankful.